evaluation of the condition, we have to go back to line three. On line three, this time, you know, I'm decrementing the value of x from three to two, and then on line four, I have to evaluate the condition again. x equals two is true, which means the exit condition is true. We exit the loop, and there are, there's nothing after that, so I get to post. Yep. So this uh, uh, program is a good way to do this, but if uh, you were taking, say, uh, minus three or minus two, you'd have to make it a uh, different statement because you never reach. Two Let's try that. Yep, you're absolutely right. That's that's exactly why I use equal to instead of uh, greater than or equal to. All right, so let's go ahead and save this first. And I'll say this one is simple repeat, which is a post-checking loop. And then this time I'm going to change my program just a little bit, but enough to really mess it up. Move all this stuff here and start tracing from scratch. Um, on line one, x is initialized to a value of two. We skip line two, we get to line three. Line three is decreasing the value of x by one. So two becomes one. Then we go to line four. Line four is evaluating x equals two. Is it true or is it false? It's false. We go back to line three. It goes from one to zero. <laughs> x equals 2 is false again. We'll go back to line 3. This time it becomes negative 1. We go to line 4. x equals 2 is false again. And it will never stop. Or will it? <laughs> That's an interesting question. It's a trick question. Okay. In theory, it does not stop. Because what is the, the most negative integer in the number line, no. on the number line. Okay, well, there's no such number as infinity, but it does go on forever, okay? So that's, that's absolutely right, okay? Because if you think, you know, a particular value, let's call, let's call that uh, k, okay? Let's call x, you know, the most negative integer that you think will ever exist. Then what is k minus one, <coughs> right? So that means this program will never stop. Now, when you run this program in C and C++, it does stop, okay? It's not an infinite, infinite loop in C, C++, and most practical programming languages. That's kind of strange, right? Because a mathematician will tell you this program should never end because, you know, when you're decrementing, it will keep, you know, the, the value only gets smaller and smaller. It will never come back and become you know, equal to two again. But in, when you actually run the program, it does stop. Go ahead. Isn't in the um, the program? Isn't there like a, a long integer and a long and the and the integer and exactly. they only allow for so many character or so many digits values. To value so many three. digits exactly. Yeah. That is the reason. Okay, that's yeah. very good. Okay, so but to to answer the question, you know, the first question I ask is, does your computer, you know, name your computer? Does it have a limited amount of memory, or does it have an infinite amount of memory? It's finite, it's finite right? Now, we can say, but I got a super duper gaming system. It has got 32 gigs of RAM. Yes, but 32 gig is still a certain number. It's a finite number, OK? So that means even if you allocate a lot of the memory to store a single integer, it still has a limited amount of resources to represent a number. Is that okay so far? Now, in most programming languages, we only allocate 32 or 64 bit to an integer, okay? One bit is a binary digit. So let me just use a word processor here. So because we are kind of talking a little bit out of the context of this particular problem, okay? So a bit, okay, usually in lower lowercase, is a binary digit. The B comes from here, and then the IT comes from here. That's why it's called a bit, because it is a binary digit. Binary means base two. The number system that we normally use is called base decimal, base 10. Okay, there are several ways to call it. It's called base 10. 
Um, and base 10 numbers is something that we feel very comfort comfortable with. What is uh, 4 plus 9? 13, okay. What is 6 times 7? 42. 42. Now, you guys know your, know, know your math, okay? How long did it take you to get to that point? To memorize the entire uh, multiplication table, to be able to carry on long division and stuff like that? A few years, right? That's because, you know, unless you master addition and subtraction, you cannot do multiplication or long multiplication. Until you master multiplication, you cannot do division in base 10. Okay? Uh, let me ask you a very simple question. The next simple question is in base 10, what is, um, I'm going to pick a different example here, 5 plus 7. You guys would go like, why would you ask a question like that? It's 12, right? But how do you know it is 12 when you first learned how to do addition? You, you count, right? You know, when you are starting out with you know, addition, single digit addition in base 10, you count. Okay, you start with five, and then you say six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, I ran out of fingers. Okay, write the one here, and then start from the you know, one, two again, right? So that's how you learn you know, all these things, okay? The other way to say five plus seven is, is 12 is, you know, this is two with a carry. Now, if you look at it from the perspective of two with a carry, you are now set up for multi-digit addition. Right? Because you can now you know, keep you know, doing this to the next digit, the next digit, and so on. This is stuff that you already know. Simple stuff. Next question is, do you think you can deal with base 2? Where you only have zeros and ones in numbers. You don't have 2, 3, 4, and so on. Now, we are not changing the values that we are representing. We're changing the representation itself. So we, can, we should still be able to represent the quantity of 5, 10, 6,000, 60 you know, million, and so on. It's just that instead of using you know, the digits that we are familiar with, we're going to use something even simpler. We're only, we are only going to use zeros and ones. Okay? So let's go ahead and you know, digress a little bit and talk about base conversion. Because you know, it, this topic really ties into what we are dealing with here. So we'll do a little digression, and then we'll come back to you know, what we were dealing with originally. OK, let's deal with base conversion. But before we do base conversion, let me just ask you this question. Let's say we have uh, a change of $16.83. Okay. Um, if I ask you. You know, to say, okay, let's say this is the change you have to do. You have to give back to a customer. How many people in this class feel confident that you can use the least number of coins and bills to make up for this amount? So instead of giving the customer six one thousand six hundred eighty three pennies, you know, you know to use you know, utilize the bills and coins you know, effectively. How many? How many? How many people feel confident about doing this? Okay. Because if you're not confident about doing this by hand, you know, maybe an algorithm class is may not be the best class that you should take, you know, at this point. All right. So you know base conversion already. If you can deal with change, you know, using a really kind of complicated you know, money system that we have, you already know base conversion because base conversion is actually a whole lot easier than making change or using you know making change for this amount. Okay, so let's see you know why I say that. Okay, what is the smallest unit of um, coins? A penny. A penny. Okay, a penny is that many dollars. What is the next one? We just use the common ones. Okay, uh, so we can pens. skip the uncommon ones. Okay, you have a dime, uh, a nickel, and then we have a dime, quarter. and then we have a quarter. Have I seen any re repetition of multi multiplier here? Five. 1 to 5 is a multiplication of 5. 5 to 10 is a multiplication of 2. And then from 10 to 25 is a multiplication of 2.5. So I haven't seen anything repeating yet. What about uh, the next one? Dollar bill? 
Well, all the common ones, okay? One dollar bills. <laughs> we'll, we'll skip the half dollar. We don't want to jam up those, you know, vendor machines and stuff. <laughs> so we have a dollar bill. Um, so even at this point, we haven't seen a single common multiplier. We have a multiplier of 5, 2, 2.5, and now a 4. Right? The next one is 5 here, which is a repetition now. Okay, so, so we have a 5. Now, you would think, you know, then the next one is 10, right? $10 bills. So you would think that you know, we should follow the same pattern as, you know, as from a dime to a quarter. No, we don't. Right, the next one is a $20 bill. And then what, what is after the $20 bill? It's a $50 bill. There's no pattern whatsoever here, okay? I certainly don't see one, okay? Yep. There's no common ratio, right? There's, well, there's common ratio, but it's not a repeating pattern. It's not predictive. I cannot say, oh, once I know, you know, it's 5, 2, 2.5, and 4, that pattern repeats itself because it does not. Okay? And yet, you guys can all, you know, make a change of $16.83 using one $10 bill, one $5 bill, one $1 bill, uh, three quarters, one dime, oops, <laughs> one, one nickel and three pennies, okay? You already know how to do it, right? If you know how to do that, you know how to do base conversion already because base conversion is a whole lot easier, okay? This is complicated stuff. Base conversion says, instead of you know, dividing, you know, having money bills like this, we have the following. We have, you know, this number may not lend itself to that sort of thing, so I have to change this number a little bit here. So let's say change it to, I can't do anything less than a quarter because we, because otherwise you know, the base 10 version is hard to do. So we have a quarter, yeah, we'll just do a quarter here. Okay. So with a binary system, it looks like this. It looks like this, you have a quarter, you have a half dollar, you have a dollar, you have two dollar bills, and then you have four dollar bills, and then you have eight dollar bills, and then you have sixteen dollar bills, and then you have thirty-two dollar bills, and so on. Do you see a pattern here? Where we, do, where we could not find a pattern earlier, now we see a very clear pattern. What is the pattern? Two to the power. It keeps doubling, right? You know, two to the power of something. All right. So using this system, can someone tell me how to make a change of $16.25? Oh, that's so, so trivial. <laughs> one $16 bill and then one quarter, right? Okay, let's, let's make it harder. What about, mm, yep, go ahead. I just wanted to mention that you can do this on your hands. You can count binary on the hands. Right, with five bits. I see. Okay. Okay. This is tougher. Okay. So let's let's try to make a change for thirty-seven dollars and uh, seventy-five cents. We know how to do that already with base ten. So let's skip that and we'll do it in base two instead. Okay. So using these numbers, what do you do? One thirty-two, one four, and then one one, and then what do you do? Ah, but you cannot use three quarters. Remember, we want to use the least number of stuff. One, so one half dollar and then one one quarter, right? I see. Hmm, it doesn't sound too bad, right? But guess what? You know base conversion already, okay? So how does this?